89.3 and 88.5 Yes, yes FM. FM. Also broadcasting on the internet at yeshome.com and on your smartphone through TuneIn Radio and Wonder Radio. Spirits on Festival coming up June the 27th through the 29th. One of the bands that'll be there is the Newsboys. And on the phone line, I have got Mr. Duncan of the Newsboys. Hello. April, how are you? I am well yourself, sir. I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Excellent. So are you taking a little bit of a break after having been out on tour for a couple of months? Yeah, yeah, we are. We've been out um, supporting the God's Not Dead tour for, gosh, man, it seems like, well, it is nearly 18 months now. So we're finally done with that and um, just got home last Monday. And I'm just getting ready to go down the beach for a couple of weeks. So really looking forward to that. Excellent. Now, is home here in the States, or do you guys get to go back home, at least some of you who make up the band, back to Australia? Yeah, I, I've, uh, I've lived in the U.S. now for, for quite a while. So I live in Nashville, where the whole band lives in Nashville, or great, or the, or the greater Nashville area. So, uh, yeah, I definitely call the U.S. home, that's for sure. Excellent. Okay, so Kings Island coming up June the 27th through the 29th. You guys get to play on the 29th. And uh, I, I know that you guys are no strangers to a lot of the uh, festivals and a lot of the amusement yeah. parks. So uh, looking forward to that one with you guys. And uh, have you done Kings Island before, or is this the first time for you guys? Oh, man, yeah, we've done Kings Island many times. And it's one of the ones I really look forward to. Uh, number one, because it's, it's, it's not too far from Nashville, but it's it's the one I, I like to take my kids to because they uh, they're kind of getting to that age now where they want to go to all these theme parks. So the, so they uh, place like Kings Island, Kings Dominion, and those places up in the, in that area. They just really look after the bands and the artists. So we we get to go, you know, we get to go on all the rides and they take us around. So we we probably get to do about you know, two days worth of rides in about two or three hours. So we really get looked after, and it's kind of a nice moment where I can connect with my kids, too. So it's just awesome. That's great. Now, how old are your kids? Uh, two girls and a boy, uh, 10, 8, and 6. Oh, fantastic ages. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely the amusement park. So do you guys have, like, a particular ride that is your absolute favorite, like maybe even at Kings Island or some of the other places? Yeah, they kind of like in the the the, uh, the log rides, you know, the the, the, ro- the, the at the moment. But uh, I did um, I just t- talking to a guy at an interview I did earlier today. I did take my six my eight year old girl on a ride at one of the theme parks. I can't remember which one it is now. But it was called the Boss, and it was like one of the I think it was voted the fourth most extreme wooden roller coaster in the world. <laughs> So I'm like, I didn't know all this. I, I found all this after the fact, of course. But I took her on last year uh, on the, on this roller coaster ride, and she gave, you know, during the ride, she just had this look on her face, like, "Daddy, what are you doing to me? Why did you bring me on this ride?" And she had a little meltdown after, and I thought, okay, note to self: never take her on the boss again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, those wooden roller coasters—they're they're crazy, man. They kind of throw you around. Yeah. And kind of you. And the new ones, are so, the new ones are so smooth, you know. Yeah, it's the older ones that kind of toss you around and stuff. Uh, a couple of the Cedar Point ones toss you around a little bit, and uh, some of the some of the ones up to uh, Michigan's Adventure too kind of throw you around because they were built like in the uh, you know early eighties. I know, right? <laughs> I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh uh, well, you know, eventually, then she'll probably be dragging you on something, and then you'll be the one having the meltdown afterwards. So. <laughs> Well, that's hopefully not. I, I'm I'm pretty used to that kind of stuff. I've I've been doing it for years. So, but they do, man. They, the rides are crazy. They they um, you know, you know, even as a grown man now. I mean, I know I'm kicking up some of those roller coasters and it just keeps going up and up and up. And the man, I I definitely have a moment. It's just like, okay, I'm ready to stop going up now. I'm ready to, you know, get off this thing. But I think the more the more you kind of do it, the, you know, you kind of get used to the the whole feeling of it, and, and it's just so much fun. Absolutely. Who are some of your bands or favorite bands to play with when you guys are, are out there on tour with all these festivals? Well, the great thing about the festivals is you do get to see all the bands that you've kind of created friendships with over the years. But I think for me, one of my favorite bands at the moment um, is actually uh, Building 429. Uh, they, uh, they've, they've kind of toured with us quite a bit over the last, uh, last six months. So we've really got to know those boys well. Um, we just toured a little bit with Britt Nicole, uh, her, her and her band have been awesome. Um, 
Gosh, I'm just trying to think. Of course, Toby. Uh, Toby's, you know, great mate of the band, has been for many years. So I, I always try to get to see Toby set if I can. Um, Skillet's another band. I always try to get them with known that man. I think they've been around just about as long as we have. Um, but I always try to get try to get to see their show because you, and uh, and uh, probably one of the probably one of my favourites would be the band called Red. Um, yeah. I know the boys. Uh, we we, uh, we toured Winter Jam with them a couple of years ago, and they just put on. Uh, not only great music, but they put on an awesome show, so I always try to get seat in if I can. Excellent. Great bands. All bands we play right here at Yes FM, so good awesome. picks. Love hey. it. Very good. <laughs> oh, you said that you just got off tour with the God's Not Dead tour. So, I mean, yeah. what was that like? I mean, you guys, we're looking at a list of, like, all the shows and, like, sold out, sold out, sold out. What's that like? Oh, we've got to love it, you know, for a band, for a kind of a, a branding that's been around as long as we have. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people are kind of wondering when we're going to quit and do all this kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, for us, I think the best is yet to come. I really do. We're working on a new record. But it's, uh, you know, still to this day, I never get used to that. I ne- it never gets old uh, when you see, when you ha- see, you know, you're sitting, you know, whether it's a 1,500-seater, whether it's a 2,500-seater, or whether it's a an arena. Um, I never get old. I never get old playing uh, playing sold out shows. You know, it's uh, and a lot of people ask us. You know, what do you prefer? Do you play prefer to play a theater or an arena? But they're both great in their own way. There's there's nothing about the awesome kind of majestic feeling of playing a fifteen thousand seater filled to the brims and people. You know, the, the, the kind of the, it's way more intense. It's a bigger feeling that you're getting back you know, kind of from from the crowd. But then to play a packed-out 2,000-seater, um, it's a lot more intimate. So you kind of get to see the whites of their eyes kind of thing. You get to see their reaction, and uh, it's just awesome. It sounds like it's a lot of fun. I mean, and you guys have been through, you know, so much transition. You're talking about the core of you guys like you and, and um, you know, uh, Jody and, and a few of the others who have been with the band yeah. since since the beginning. But then, of course, you know, you've got the change out. You started with, out with John doing leads and then Peter, and, and now you've got yeah. Michael Tate. And uh, yeah. so so there's that, like, there's, there's that transition there. But I would imagine, at least, you know, in my mind's eye, because of the fact that there has been some transition, it's also kind of brought that excitement, maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of a freshness each time you've transitioned out with, with your lead guy. Do, do you feel the same way, or what's, what's the transition been like for you guys, especially with Michael? Oh, a thousand percent. You're dead right. I think when you do have a change, um, you know, people don't like change for the most part. You're always going to get you know, a very vocal one, one point one, you know, one, one percent of the population or all your fans, you know, kind of getting very vocal about it. And that's okay too. I understand it. But I think the great thing when Michael came on board is, you know, I think as far as the musical heritage, we come from the same place, you know, back in the day for the fans that have been with us, um, you know, if you're a Newsboys fan, you're a DC Tall fan and vice versa. So there was kind of that connection. We knew we weren't starting at zero, but saying that, it's still about the music, and the music's got to be great. And if the music's not great, you know, it doesn't matter how good a singer you are, it doesn't matter how good a drummer you are, or how good your show is. If the songs ain't there, um, people aren't going to come see you. So we worked very, very hard, particularly on the first record we did with Michael. And we were kind of both the mold, because before that time, we'd kind of always written all our own songs in-house. Um, but with this one, with, my, with the Born Again record... Um, we thought, man, let's just get the best songs we possibly can because we knew we were kind of pushing, pushing, a, pushing, pushing stuff uphill in the sense of we got to, we've really got to try to convince in a or way uh, people of this new branding with Michael. And uh, when it debuted at number four on Billboard's Top 200, I think that was kind of the first corporate sigh of relief that, okay, guys, this is going to work. I mean, I think we made it look easy, but, man, we definitely had some moments that were definitely not easy, that's for sure. Well, I mean, now it seems like it would be a little bit easier. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got the God's Not Dead, which has, you know, been out and, and doing well and then working on some new music. Um, but, yeah, you did make it look easy, but I imagine there were times where you were biting your nails down to the nubs. <laughs> In, oh, absolutely, April. And, and uh, you know, there was. We, had, we kind of had a six- to nine-month period of time there where it was just like, guys, I don't know if this is going to work. We had kind of fans in an uproar. We had promoters. 
uh, that were kind of wanting to back back away from the band because they weren't sure whether this whole thing was going to work. Well, no one knew. I mean, nothing was a given, so no one kind of knew. We we kind of had a really good feeling that it, that it could and, and it would, um, but no one knew for sure. So it was it was a tough time, man. I mean, obviously you kind of work so hard for so many years, and, and it is a branding. It's like you know, a band is a branding like anything else. And yeah, when you when you have a, a, a big change like a lead singer, and a lead singer is a big change in the kind of the face of the branding. Um, it was scary times. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I could probably I can probably be a little more honest now. Um, it was some times, it was some definitely from incredibly sobering times on so many levels that, okay, we've, I've put, you know, 20 plus years of my life into this thing and it could all fall over. And that, that was very sobering times. It was very daunting times. We kind of had our backs against the wall, but we knew that it could work. We knew, we knew that, that the kind of basic fundamentals of the band were strong. All we had to do was convince everyone else that, you know, we're still a viable option, that, uh, you know, we're still going to make music that resonated with the hearts of our fans. And, and we went, we, I mean, the Born Again record was, it was tumultuous because even though it was this creatively, it was such a, it was such a, a shift for us, we knew we had to do it. It was like one of those things when you know you have to have an operation or you, there's something you know you've got to, have, you've got to do, but you don't want to do it because it's going to hurt. And uh, it was kind of one of those moments in our lives that was just like, okay, we're on a thousand foot cliff here, but we know the only way to get to safety is to jump off. And that was kind of one of those moments in our life. But of course, uh, you know, that's obviously we can talk about it freely now because it's history. But man, it was tough. Yeah, I imagine it would be. But now here you are. Okay, so Michael's been the lead singer for a couple of years now. And now you're working on what would be considered your, your what, third album with him? Third, third album with Michael, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so can you give us any information, or is it still kind of a hush-hush thing? No. Uh, actually, the first song uh, drops May 31st. The first single is called Live With Abandon. Okay. And it's kind of like a really nice mix between, stylistically, between uh, God's Not Dead record and the Born Again record. So this is kind of like a transitional song. Um, it's a great, great song. I think it'll go number one. I'm feeling really good about it. I think our fans that really love God's Night Dead in particular are going to love it. But I think this record, uh, the, when that, it actually drops September 10 in the fall, which we're still working on. Um, man, I, you know, I've always been a sucker for a three and a half minute pop song. I love pop music. I grew up loving the music of the 80s. So for me, this record in particular, it's a pop record. Um, we really want to go beyond the bounds of, of, uh, of the church in this one, although we knew we had to solidify that with the last record. We kind of had to really kind of put a stamp on, okay, Michael, this, this version of the band is the real deal. We're not messing around. This is not a fad. Uh, we're here to stay. Uh, but this time, creatively, we've gone probably a lot more, a lot more to the place where the band actually does sit. And the band is a, is a pop band. You know, you'll see them in a live show when we come play. But um, this is definitely, you know, Born Again on Steroids, uh, stylistically. It's, it's a pop record, no doubt about it, but it's very, uh, very modern pop. It's, it's quite a, more the, mo- the most modern kind of pop record the Newsboys have ever done. So we just hope people, uh, hope people will, uh, you know, enjoy the ride with us as we explore this new area for us, you know. Oh, it sounds great. And you said it comes out in September? September 10, I think the, the album okay. comes out, but uh, the first song comes out uh, May 31st. Very good. And do you have a name for the album yet, or are you still working on that? We're still working on it. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. We're, we're, yeah, we're pretty sure on uh, one or two titles, but I just don't, I don't want to say it quite yet. I think, they, I think it's probably going to go to press here pretty soon, and it may have already, but I'm just not quite. I haven't talked to the office today, so I'm not quite sure whether it has. Um, but I, I, you know, we're pretty kind of nine hundred percent sure what it's going to be. But it, I'm sure in the next couple of days you'll know. That's awesome. Very good. And um, once again, you guys are playing at uh, Spirit Sound Festival, which is coming to our area, Kings Island. Uh, the day that you're scheduled is June the 29th. Well, you had said something about Live With Abandon being the first uh, first single off of the album. We actually have that in our little hands right now. Oh, you do? Oh, oh yeah, we got it. So. 
now, 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 I just want to tell you that some some stations have been playing it early. Okay. Um, I, I know, I know, you know, depending on your program, uh, uh, some some do like that, and so I know the labels don't. But uh, have you heard it yet? No, I have not heard it yet. So I'm like looking forward to playing it because it'll be my first time hearing it. A couple of our other DJs have gotten a chance to to play it a few times and stuff, but yeah. I haven't heard it yet. So, but oh uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, hopefully you like it. I, I'm really proud of the song. I think it's a kind of a, a great bridge song, you know, for where we're. For, for where this record's going. So I can't wait for everyone to hear it. I, I'm so excited for May 31st. I really am. Absolutely. Well, we'll go ahead and play it right now, if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Duncan, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We look forward to seeing you guys at Spirit Song Festival and, you know, wish you all the best on uh, the new album and everything else that you've got in the works. Can't wait, April. Can't wait. All right. We will talk to you later. All right. Bye now. Bye-bye. Yes, FM.